How you doing? My name is Glenn. I am with V Power Equipment. <clears throat> we are here today to talk about um, four new water pumps that we have actually introduced. We're going to talk about two of them today, um, but we actually are introducing four new water pumps. Um, water pump kits, I should call them actually. These are the water pump part of it. Um, you need to provide the engine. This is, but this is the complete water pump that will attach to that engine. So um, the four new pumps that we're releasing, one of them is called a pulley pump. It's basically belt driven. Uh, another one is a high pressure or they call it a fire pump. Um, then we're going to also introduce a full uh, trash pump and a semi trash pump. So <clears throat> today in this video, we're going to talk about two of them. We're going to talk about the pulley pump and we're going to talk about the high pressure uh, fire pump. Um, normally we would do a video on just one but we're going to do both of them because quite honestly the pulley pump is a, a pretty quick explanation so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that one so uh, let me get the camera here and i'm going to move this over so that i can show you the components of these pumps okay so first of all this is the pulley pump and this is basically how it comes it comes with the uh, complete pump it comes with the housing which needs to be bolted on it comes with the bolts and the gasket here that goes with that comes with a few clamps and then the inlet and outlet hose adapter adapters with the rubber washer that goes with them and the strainer and so on this particular pump basically it is a belt driven pump um, you just need to provide the engine or you can use an electric motor on this pump also it uh, needs to spin right at around 3600 rpms which is the average rpm of most gasoline engines um, it should have somewhere between a 6 and an 8 horsepower engine to drive it. Uh, with electric, I believe it's slightly less. I believe electric engines are around the 3, well, let me see, I got paper here. Uh, looks like it, electric engines, 3 to 5 horsepower should do it. Um, the engine uh, should also, you know, turn in this pump at around 3,600 RPMs. Um, I'm not that versed on electric engines as I am on gasoline. I don't know um, if, if, engine, gas, if electric engines generally turn in that RPM or not, but if they turn much faster, obviously you would just put a uh, smaller pulley on the engine and try to slow it down or vice versa if you had to put a larger one if it's turning slower. Um, basically, this pump here will pump somewhere around 7,800 gallons per minute with a free flow. It uh, has a 22 foot suction capability, meaning it can pull water. Obviously it has to be primed the first time and then as long as you don't drain it, it it's self priming after that. It will pull, as I said, around 22 feet up. Uh, it can push water around 118 feet high. Um, and uh, basically that's, that's it with this pump. As I said earlier, there isn't a whole lot to talk about with this pump because it doesn't need to be assembled. It uh, comes pretty much all ready to go. All you gotta do is put the outlet on and, and power it up. So um, that's as far as we're gonna go on this pump. Now we're gonna move over to the fire pump. So the fire pump is this one here, or a high pressure pump. So basically the whole reasoning behind this pump is uh, pumps as, such as this, as water, just regular water pumps or semi-trash pumps, um, they're not designed to be pressurized. You, they need to have a two inch outlet that allows that water to flow because if you stop pressurizing them, you can crack the housings. They're just not designed for pressure. They're designed just to move a whole lot of water where the uh, pressure pump is designed to be able to take that pressure. You can actually let the pressure build up to somewhere around 100 PSI without damaging this pump, which is one of the reasons you know they use it for fire because you want to get the pressure up to the fire hose. But there's also irrigation. There's a bunch of other reasons you might want to build up pressure. Now, a pressure pump won't produce the same flow of water as the other pump. It'll, it'll actually, this pump here is capable of about uh, 3,700 gallons per hour. Um, you know something, I, I may have said the other one per minute, and it is actually per hour. Um, but this one here was, so this one's capable of 3,700 gallons per hour, and um, it will lift 262 feet, so it can actually lift higher, and the maximum suction is about the same, at about 22 feet. Uh, so this pump is a little bit different because it does need to be installed on the engine. And um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the uh, install in a minute. But first, I'll just show you what it comes with. Basically, it comes with the back housing, the O-ring, the front housing comes just like that, pretty much all assembled. The comes with an impeller the volute, the inlet and outlet, the strainer, 
and also the o-rings and um, some of the bolts so basically we, we give you the bolts that are most commonly used unfortunately this pump fits a lot of engines which is fortunate I guess but unfortunately engines will use different size threads for these here where, where you have to mount it to the engine so we give you the most common ones but you may end up have to finding them bolts if, if uh, bolts we have are a different thread um, or you know a different metric size or whatnot and they just do use different sizes hopefully we've covered most of the engines with what we give you um, but that's the only thing I could say that you could possibly have to shop for I want to go back and just correct one thing because I really think I might have said on back on this pump here I believe let me just look at what my notes here well maybe I said it right um, but it's 7800 gallons per hour and for some reason I'm thinking I said per minute um, but I'll look into that more and uh, so now we're going to hold this video for a minute and we're going to go ahead and do the assembly of the uh, high pressure pump okay so now we're going to go over the assembly of the high pressure pump we're putting this on a predator 212 um, this particular engine is a 212 hemi but it doesn't matter the hemi non hemi the insulation is exactly the same um, so it, you know either way um, so we're going to put this on this predator 212 so we're going to want to start by leaning this engine up I put a little block here and I do this for two reasons one reason is so that the camera view so you can see it but the other reason is uh, when this is installed on there these two little pieces do sit below the engine um, so whenever you go to mount this engine on something you have, kind of have to keep that in mind these do sit just a little bit lower so there has to be a little bit of space for that so anyways what we're going to do to start with is if you have a new engine or an older engine and you have the keyway in it you need to take the keyway out uh, because it will interfere with the impeller when you go to install it so we're going to start by taking that keyway out of there just tap it if you tap it back there's a slope in the back and that'll just knock that out and then what we're going to do is the kit itself came with a small keyway and we're actually going to put that in the impeller see the problem is the keyway won't pass past this seal that's why we have to take that one out so we're just going to put the uh, new keyway into that impeller and we're going to put it in just like that so we've got the keyway set inside now so that it, it doesn't have to pass through the seal I'm going to set that aside okay so now we are going to install this housing basically we're just going to put it up line up our bolts get each one started by hand by the way uh, for this Predator engine all the bolts that we needed were in the kit so there was no additional bolts needed it was a nice clean fit here I have to get all the bolts started by hand first so that we don't have any cross threading and we'll just go ahead okay then we're going to take the impeller and again we're going to get that keyway in there this might be easier if we rotate that keyway to the bottom because otherwise it wants to fall out so we're going to put it in there we put the keyway down on the bottom it's not in there right there we go i'm going to set just in there and if you can see that but we want that set right in there and then we're just going to go ahead and slide this on get that keyway to line up put that in place now we've got the volute here the volute has a notch in it right there there's a place right here on the housing on the back housing that's where that notch would go it goes just like this and now at this point <clears throat> on 99 percent of the engines that's it you're good but you're going to want to turn the engine and uh, make sure it doesn't contact either the uh, the balloon here or the back housing uh, this is easier done if you have somebody else to kind of pull it while you watch it obviously make sure it ain't going to start um, and just make sure there's no contact um, on this engine there is no contact I know there isn't uh, but now let's just say if if we did have contact um, we also I also forgot to show you we got we to put the center bolt in there so we're gonna put that in there for us so um, if you had contact 
there are two things. If you're contacting the front of the volute, then you would want to move the housing out a little bit. And you would do that by putting washer in between the back of this housing and the engine just to move this housing out a little bit so that it won't contact the volute, so the impeller won't contact the volute. If it's the other way around, if the impeller is contacting the back housing, then what you want to do is you want to take the impeller back off and just slide a washer up in there so that you're actually moving the, the impeller out a little bit. I mean, we're talking about, it shouldn't contact at all, and if it does, we're gonna be talking about a very small amount, so usually like one washer is about all you're gonna need just to move that impeller out a little bit. But like I said, most of the time, there is not gonna be any contact. This engine does not have any contact. So we're gonna set that back in there. Okay, so now we just take the housing. The housing is what holds the volute in place. So all we need to do with that housing is line it up against that rubber washer, like that. We're gonna to wanna to put this O-ring on there first. Place. Going to set the housing up in there, just like that. And we're going to bolt it up. So there, <coughs> there are six bolts here. I don't think I need to show you how to install all six. You're going to install all six bolts. And uh, that is it. You're basically done after that. These little couplers, they have a washer in them. The washer goes into the coupler. Like that. So that it's going to press up against the face of this unit here. And that's what makes the seal. And you come with uh, the two smaller ones for the smaller ports and uh, two larger ones. So that is pretty much the install in this pump. Don't forget to use the strainer when you're using this pump. These are not designed to be passing any large objects. Um, <coughs> clean water is the best thing. Um, but I mean, they can pass a little bit of debris, but it has, does have a mesh filter here and want to make sure you use this because if you, start, if you put something through there that's large, you can jam this pump up. Um, that's it for now. If you're interested in purchasing any of these items, vpowerequipment.com is where to go. And we thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.